Pigeons. Some see them as a pest. Others see them as a blight on the urban landscape. But not everyone thinks this way. I set out with a group of pigeon racers to find out what it takes to love, care for, and race these amazing birds. The night before the race, the pigeons were brought to the pigeon racing clubhouse. Here, we were shown the steps involved to get the pigeons ready for the race day. The pigeons are grabbed. They're scanned, checked off, and then basketed. After some final checks, the birds are ready to race. My name's uh, Paul Saban, and uh, I'm going on to 72. I was a panel beater for uh, 30 years, and I retired at 70. When we first started, you've got to remember, there was nothing like, you know, uh, six o'clock, everything closed. There was no, now the kids go out at midnight, you know, compared to years ago, you know, and they've got so many other things to do now. It's been, uh, I've seen a lot of think changes in uh, pigeon racing, you know, funny, I always look at the funny parts, you know, that uh, went on in life and, uh, you know, uh, repetition, the same thing every day, uh, makes a little bit of difference, you know. After being prepared at the clubhouse, the pigeons are loaded onto a truck and sent to the release point. The birds were released from the small Victorian town of Witchy Proof. From there, they travelled the 300 kilometre journey to Melbourne. Back at home, the racers waited anxiously for their pigeons to cross the horizon. That's the first pigeon home. That's his like, our winner. That's his like trying chip. Yep. And I don't know whether your camera will pick it up, but we said on the on the clock, the first pigeon home was six two one two, and if you look at that there, it's six two one two.
That's the printed list. And the pigeons that arrived when you're at, our, at my place. Right? I'll put the table in front. Right, now. After all the birds made it home, the boys headed to the clubhouse where they calculated the results and determined who was the winner. Greg Edwards, 55. Um, when I was 15, my father brought home a pigeon with a broken wing and subsequently I kept it in an, an outside toilet and uh, homed it there and from then on the interest grew into pigeon racing. Yeah. Joined a club at 16. I actually um, can rem remember quite clearly the botanical gardens catching a racing pigeon in front of my kids and it might have been a stray pigeon <clears throat> and another pigeon flyer was into the botanical gardens and he actually offered to give me some of his pigeons that weren't run. Back when I was a kid we didn't have internet or mobile phones so um, I think the main attraction was living on a farm and also living in the suburbs, just having another hobby or something to do. I mean look, it, for a lot of people that fly and race pigeons I think the pleasure is actually watching them fly around um, and being able to haul them in. Um, and the husbandry involved. As the boys shared a laugh over the results, it was clear to see that this was so much more than just racing pigeons. Nobody was there just to win. They were there for the mateship, the community and the passion, passed down from father to son as an escape from boredom and complacency. I expected vicious competitiveness, but I discovered an atmosphere of friendship and light-hearted banter between a group carrying the burden of a fading tradition. Now that's it, no more work. <laughs> Now, to be perfectly honest, nowadays um, it's basically uh, a hobby that you do for the love of it. Yeah, yeah, I see. But not, not even so, not, not even so much for the racing, but to actually have the hobby in your backyard. Yeah. So it's yeah. the hobby in your backyard. So I occupy, I'm occupied every morning. Yeah. Up till lunchtime, dealing with me pigeons. Yep. Letting them out to fly around the roof, cleaning the lofts, feeding them, checking them over, wah, wah, wah. So every morning, because I'm retired, mm. every morning till lunchtime, I'm occupied. Yeah. Now, yeah, other people will be sitting there watching, you know, Oprah on television or something. Yep, yeah. You know, so so that's, the, that's the, the joy of it for me. But I have, I mean, historically, I've got to go back to history, you know, but I've, when there was more, I have actually won.